all things Montessori community. How's everybody doing? I hope a lot of you in the Northern Hemisphere are on spring break and enjoying a nice little reprieve. I know that some of my good friends were going through te peer and teacher conferences recently, and I hope everyone just got through that either on the parent side, the admin side, or the teacher side. It is a lot of work on every level. So I hope, and I'm sending the best of wishes to everybody. So this week's episode is actually a bonus episode. I recorded the other week for our patrons, but I liked it so much that I wanted to include it in our main feed because it's something that's really close to my heart. It's all about reading aloud to children. Oh my gosh, reading aloud. There's something so special about it. And it was so fun to just talk through the beauty of it. And since we're all, you know, either at home or doing distance learning or spending way too much time with family, um, reading and literature can be a really great escape. I know that in the beginning of the pandemic, there were all these um, articles about books that other children, you know, about other children being in a crisis or or being in um, somewhere where they couldn't escape and having to imagine things. And, um, and those are those are really cool things to hold on to in times like this. And reading aloud is really a special and precious thing that we can do. I mean, early humans have been passing down stories for thousands of years, and it's so cool that we still have those oral traditions today. So yeah, so I hope you guys enjoy this episode. Um, if you want to become a patron and you get more bonus content, you can head over on to our Patreon page, All Things Montessori. Um, it's linked below. And it's, it's great. We, we really appreciate the support. This episode, of course, is brought to you by Sapling Supply. They were just at the AMS conference. It's two dads making Montessori furniture. And definitely check them out. You can get um, up to 10% off site-wide if you use our coupon code ATM10. So go ahead and check out Sapling Supply. They're a fantastic company. And without further ado, I hope you really enjoy this episode all about reading aloud. I wanted to talk today about reading aloud to children. This is something that took me a while to understand because I, for some reason, just, I had it in my head that the children I was working with were too old to be read aloud to, which is just ridiculous because even as an adult, there's something so beautiful and calming about being read aloud to. And I remember when I first sort of got over myself, because I was so nervous my first year teaching, I was just like a mess. And I was so nervous to just be vulnerable. And for some reason, reading aloud felt vulnerable to me at the time. This was a long time ago. <laughs> um, but I remember one afternoon, my I mean, my first year teaching, it was so chaotic, right? Like it was just everybody <laughs> was like just trying to stay alive. And, you know, everybody... I was reading Charlotte's Web. I remember that. And everybody was so calm. And it was beautiful. And I remember I ended up reading for like an hour because I think the children really craved it and wanted it. And that was one of my favorite memories of my first year teaching. And then it just became a tradition. I I, I continued to read to them every day. Um, of course, not for an hour each day. Um, but it became something ritualistic. It became a conversation starter. It became part of our community. And then I got really into just picking really interesting books for these children and I to read. Of course, I threw in my favorites. I'm a big fantasy fanatic, so I had to read them like Harry Potter and all that stuff. But I think it's really important because when you read aloud to children, you have this immense possibility of introducing them to a new story. Now, in the elementary classroom, we are storytellers. We are storytellers in every subject, but it's fun to introduce them to a storyteller that wrote a book. It's interesting to show them different authors, authors of color, female authors. There's so many outlets and possibilities for these children to just be really introduced to new things. And it's just a bonding experience. And then, you know, you get to sit down what happened last time in this book? And, you know, I've had, I've read really funny books, like The Phantom Tollbooth is one of my favorites because it's full of puns. 
And I mean, you know, get silly with it, make silly voices. And this was stuff that I just had to get more comfortable over time because I felt really vulnerable and really afraid at first. But that's the thing with elementary kids. The more you are yourself, the more they absolutely love you. Yeah, that's that's really it. So when you're choosing literature to read aloud, you know, I mean, obviously you want it to apply to the age group. And since we do mixed age group, this can kind of be tough sometimes, especially when you're doing six to 12. But I found that all children, they're just going to eat it up. And also when you have six-year-olds in a six to 12 class, they might be reading at a higher reading level. And even if they're not, it's so good to expose them to this. And a lot of classrooms I've seen have done, you know, scheduled reading time for children or things like that. And while I understand the reasoning behind that, because you want to expose children to books, not every child is going to want to read at that specific time. Reading should be an organic experience and any child is welcome to read any time in the classroom. That's just, that should, there should never be a limit on reading is what I'm saying. And some children just devour books and some children don't. And that's fine, totally fine. But they're still going to get exposure to great literature with you reading aloud to them. I cannot recommend it enough. And even if you're in the virtual space right now, um, when I was virtually teaching in the fall, I read aloud to them. We were reading this sweet book called Saving Winslow. It's so cute. It's about this little boy who saves this donkey. Like it's the, it's just the cutest book. So I like highly recommend that book. It's fantastic. It's Saving Winslow by Sharon Creech, I believe. Yes. Um, Yeah, I highly recommend that. So yeah, so you can just really show your personality with your book choices. But also I think it's really important to include authors of color, black authors, um, really important to include female authors, you know, show a diverse and inclusive author, you know, author bookshelf. You need, it needs to be inclusive. So that's something really to think about. If you look at your bookshelves in your classroom or in your own home, you know, look at how many of those are black authors. Look at how many of those are female or look how, you know, really do a little revisiting to your own library and expand your boundaries because that will be, that'll serve, it'll set a great message to the children. So, yep, I encourage you to read aloud. They just love it. I'm sure you already are and not as vulnerable as I was. But if you are feeling a little hesitant, go ahead and dive on in there. It's so much fun and the kids just absolutely love it. Thanks again for listening.